Hi there, my name is Vince from MyMadeVince.com and in this video today I'm going to show you this product here. So as you can see we have two arcade sticks built into one unit. But the thing that makes this different is the fact that it's got a load of games built into it. Actually it's got 999 games, so just under 1000 games built into it. And if you were born in the 1970s or 1980s you're going to love this because most of them are arcade games from the 1980s and 1990s. So it's going to bring back plenty of memories for you. So the good thing about this is that it's just really easy to set up. All you have to do is plug it into a power cable that's supplied with it, plug it into a TV or monitor via HDMI or VGA and away you go. You then have 999 games that you can scroll through and then you can play whatever you want to play, you load it up with credits and away you go. So the good thing about it is because most of the games are the older retro games, they're really easy to get used to. So for example, me and my son, we completed Golden Axe and Altered Beast last night. It's good because you haven't got to spend hours getting used to each of the games. Because they're arcade games, a lot of the time you're only using two or three of the buttons and obviously the joystick. In which case then, my son's only eight, but we had a good time playing together. I was player one, he was player two, and it didn't matter that the graphics are obviously not anywhere near the games you're used to now because the good thing is the playability is there. And with 999 games, you've got plenty to scroll through. Now with this, it is completely plug and play. You can't load any more games onto it. You can get other variations where you can load games onto it, but with this, they're already built in. Now, this isn't really doing anything different than getting an arcade stick and connecting it up to your gaming PC, and then you can download all these ROMs, although most of the time you will be downloading them illegally. You can still download them and you can do this yourself. What this does is it takes all the legwork out for you because you haven't got to learn how to do the emulators, you haven't got to learn how to do the ROMs, you haven't got to learn how to put it into full screen mode and get used to all the other things, all those problems that can occur when you're emulating. Somebody else has done all that for you and then all you have to do is plug this in and play it. Now the name of this particular one is uh, Pandora Box 5S or, or a Pandora Key 5S. Now. It is a clone. These are clones of the original Pandora's box that was popular, so then you had other companies out there that just basically copied it. But just because it's a clone, it doesn't mean it's no good. It is still a lot of fun and it's a lot cheaper. So yes, it's not as good as the Pandora box, but you're not paying the price of the Pandora box. If you're really into your retro games, you're not going to be going down this road anyway because you're probably going to want Sanwar buttons and a Sanwar joystick and you'll probably want maybe better emulation because on some of the games such as Outrun and Mortal Kombat, it is laggy, but the majority of them are absolutely fine. And if you were really into, for example, one particular game, you might notice that there is slight inaccuracies because it's emulated. But for the most part, and for most people, you're not going to notice any difference. And the main thing about this is it's just fun. So don't get too involved in the sound isn't quite right or it might be only like running at 95% of the speed instead of 100% of the speed. If you just take it as read that it's not going to be exactly the same as the original arcade, but you probably won't notice, then you're still going to have fun with this. Now let me show you where I got this one from. Right, so this is from a company called Gearbest.com. They're having their fourth anniversary here, so things are going to be a little bit cheaper for a while. And then in the little search thing up the top, just type in 999 video games, and then it will just bring it up there. And if you have a look, it's this one here, the third one along. And it is currently £115.95p. So if you're using dollars, then you're probably going to be looking at around $155. So it's not cheap, but you've got to remember that you're getting two arcade sticks and the good thing about it is it's actually got USB ports on the back so you can connect this up to your PC and use the arcade sticks as controllers for your Steam games and I'll show you that later on in the video. Right so in the package we get the HDMI cable that's currently connected to the monitor. We also get a VGA cable as well. We also get a USB male to male. So this is what you're going to use when you want to use the fight sticks on something like a PC. I believe it also works with a PS3, but I personally haven't tried it. But I've definitely tried it on Steam and it works. But you have to change the configuration. So you have to set it up as your own controller and put the inputs and the buttons in where you want them to work. And then it will work fine. I'll show you Cuphead's working later on in the video. You also get a couple of spare buttons, which is a nice little touch. Now remember, this whole thing has to be built to a cost because 
because you've seen it there, 115 pounds. So don't expect Sanwa quality out of the joysticks and buttons, but obviously you can replace them because these are all modular. I'm gonna take it apart later. There's three screws just to take it apart to show you the inside and you can see that you can swap them over. Realistically, are you gonna do that? I don't think so because really this is gonna be targeted towards people that just want a little bit of retro experience for not a lot of money and more importantly, not a lot of time. They might not wanna spend hours setting the thing up came with this particular lead here. So you're gonna to have to convert that over to a UK style plug. So you're gonna to have to get adapter. Or what I just did is I just use another lead to feed the power supply. So this is the power supply here. And then all I did is I just plugged in my own lead into there. Now, if you're wondering about how much power it takes, uh, the output is 12 volts at 3000 milliamps. So it's basically 12 volts at three amps. So that's how much power it's drawing. Now, in my house, I've tried it on five different TVs and one monitor. It worked perfectly on the monitor that you can see is attached to now, and it works perfectly on four of the TVs. For some reason, on my fifth TV, which is a 43-inch Hitachi uh, Full HD TV, it didn't work. What happened is, when I connected up via HDMI, it kept coming on and off. So the picture would come on, then the picture would go off. It would flash on and off. So basically, I had to connect it up via VGA. Now, all I can think of is that this, I believe, when I connect up to other TVs, it's saying that it's outputting the resolution is 800 by 600. So I presume with that Hitachi TV, it must be looking for an input of either 480p, 720p, or 1080p. And for some reason, it, I presume it just didn't like the resolution, and that's why it didn't work on that TV. So you could be unlucky, but hopefully your TV will also have VGA. And then with that particular TV, I can next up via VGA, and it's absolutely fine. So although the VGA signal is analog, it's still gonna cope with 800 by 600 absolutely fine. In fact, with VGA, you can go all the way up to 1080p, but it's an analog 1080p, not a digital 1080p, but you're not gonna notice any difference on games on this setup here. So let me show you the back of the unit and show you the inputs on it. Right, so here we have the back of the unit. You can see we've got power on and off here. We've got our power supply that goes into here. We've got HDMI out that goes to the TV. We also have VGA out that goes to the TV. We've got audio out, so you can plug your headphones into here or separate speakers into here and then that will work fine. Now remember, with HDMI, it carries picture and sound. So the monitor over here has picture and sound. With VGA, it's only got picture. So if you want sound, you're gonna have to run a 3.5 millimeter cable so 3.5 millimeter jack from here into your TV, then that's gonna put sound into the TV. Or if you have a look on this side here, it actually has built-in speakers or built-in speaker. It's only got one speaker, but it is pretty loud and we've got a volume for it here. So if I was to turn that up full, you can hear now the sound's coming out there. And then if I was to lower it down, that little bit of sound is just coming out of the TV. I've got the volume very low on this monitor over here. So you can just have VGA here and then rely on the speaker here, but it's only one speaker and obviously the sound's not gonna be great. But it will do until you get yourself a 3.5 millimeter lead and put it through to your TV. Okay, so that is the, the volume wheel that I just showed you for the internal speaker built into this. And here we have a settings button. So when I press this button, which I'll do later, it says CFG, I don't know what that stands for, but it's basically settings. Maybe it's configuration, would it be? Haven't got a clue. Anyway, uh, when you press that button, it's gonna bring up a settings menu, and then you can change things like the difficulty of the game and how many lives you've got. And also you can change the, the picture so you can have it more old school or where they try to round off the pixels to make it look nicer. And then we have two USB ports here. I'm not 100% sure why there's two, but this is where you're gonna plug your USB cable into your PC to get it to work on Steam. Now with me, I only managed to get it to work on the bottom USB. When I plugged it into the top USB, it didn't do anything. But both of the sticks work on the bottom one. So you can play two player, which I'll show you later, for example in Cuphead, by just using the bottom one here. And in the box, they do give you the mail to mail USB cable. Now I will list through all the games later. Basically you scroll up and down here. So for example, 192, 193, 194, etc. And then you can jump forward in blocks of 10 by just going right or left. So left's going down 10, right's going up 10. So at the end of the video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scroll through every single game so you can have a look at the 999 games and then you will know whether your favorite ones are on here or not. Now just before I show you the games, I just wanna show you the settings menu. So if we hit that little button at the back, 
it will bring up this menu here. Now, this is where, for example, you can do an I.O. test. So if you want to know what buttons do what, you can go to I.O. and you can see up, down, left, right, A, B, C, D, E, F. So these are the buttons here, A, B, C. We have three white buttons at the top, three at the bottom, and then two buttons here, which will be your coin and your start. So this is like your pause menu. So when you're playing a game, you can hit the pause menu, you can exit it, and it will bring you back to the screen with all the games again. And again, on this side, on the right-hand side, A, B, C, D, E, F, and you can check your joystick there. Right, okay, to exit that, we do that. Now, different things. You can have, for example, credit set in here is free play, where you can just play all you want, or you can change that to one on one to one. I believe what this is, when you uh, move up and down here, that three to two, I believe that then player one will have three credits, player two will have one credit, etc. So I'm gonna put that back to free play. But when you do have that one there, it also lights up this one here and this one here. And this is where you can change it to, for example, menu or start and coin, and select game mode any or with coin. So most people will just have it on free play. So let me just change that back to free play. There we go. And uh, auto exit, uh, quality optimization. This is on by default. You can turn it off and then it will be slightly more old school. You're not gonna notice a huge difference between it. And in game setting, this is where you can change the difficulty and also edit the games list. So for example, if I was to press A, you can go to the particular game you want. So let's go down to, uh, let's go down to Altered Beast. Or to beast A, and now it's on difficulty four, life four, so you can change A between two, four, six, eight. Now I'll be honest with you, on this particular game and also Golden Axe, I went from difficulty eight to difficulty two, and I couldn't notice any difference. So I can't tell you whether two's easier and eight's hardest. I couldn't notice any difference at all. But what I did notice is on the life, then uh, if you were to press B, then you can change that two, three, four. And I believe when I had it on two, then you started off with Altered Beast alive obviously and then you had one life up the top so uh, you can you can change that if you want uh, other thing you can do is you can edit your games list so for example if you were to go to B which is this second button here then I can hide all the games here so let's say if I press C it's going to block all the games now apart from Altered Beast if I also wanted aliens on there I can press A and now it's going to block all the games from that home screen where it has all the games apart from alien and Altered Beast the reason you would do this is for example if uh, let's say if we display them all by pressing B if there was a game on here that wasn't suitable for your children for example let's say Airwolf I'm not saying it's not suitable suitable it is but if you didn't want that showing then you could just press A and then it's not going to come up so they're not going to be able to play that unless they go and hit the settings button at the back so for example if you're only playing maybe 10 games on here what you could do is you could hide them all by pressing C and then you could click select your 10 games and then they would be the 10 games that you show up but right now I want to display all because I want all 999 to show right and then to exit that we're just going to go to D D again, you've also got a favorites list as well. Go to D again. I'm gonna go down to safe setting and reboot, and then it's just gonna start up the console again. If you go to factory settings, then it won't give you another option. As soon as you go to that setting, it doesn't say, are you sure? It will automatically go back to factory settings. It's not a problem, but if you've just spent the last hour getting all your games and stuff in a certain order, then by just going to factory reset by accident, it's gonna put it back to the factory settings and that's all gonna be lost. Okay, I'm just gonna show you some games now. Right, I forgot to mention earlier that there is a fan over here, so it is actually quite noisy. This is the fan here. And when it's on your lap, because obviously you're always gonna be near to this, it's not like a console where you have your controller in your hand and your console might be six or 10 foot away from you. This is always gonna be right next to you. And that fan is quite off-putting because it's quite a strong fan and you can hear it very easily. So you're gonna to have to put up the volume a little bit louder to overcome the noise of the fan. Well, let me just show you a bit of Auto Beast to begin with. Okay, so gonna hit that one there. And now it's gonna load up the game. Load times doesn't take long. You're normally playing the game within about 10 to 15 seconds. Here we go, one player start only. So let's load up some credits by hitting this button up here. So then we're just gonna go to continue. And now you see it's gone credits two. If I hit it twice and then go continue, it should jump up to three or four. There we go, credits four. So now we can play two player on this. So hit two player there. And now we're gonna have two players. So one player will be on the left side, second player will be on the right hand side. And with this one, we're just using the top button. So this is the red one here and you see here, that's, that's gonna be punch, kick and jump. And again, this side here, the blue one, 
jump, punch, and kick. And what happens is when you get like those white wolves, then you, you get yourself power ups. And once you get three of them, you then change into the beast. So watch this now. You see here, I've now changed into the wolf. And this is where you can do all your special attacks. So you can see there, fire. Now, as far as lag and stuff is concerned, it seems really good. So for example, if I was to jump here, let me just do that again. So you can see I've got an option to continue up there. And now you can see there when I'm jumping, that it is pretty responsive. Right, let me show you another few games. And then to exit it, we just need to hit this button here, and then you can see continue or exit, and then hit A. And now we're back to the main screen again. So here we have Golden Axe 2 player. And right now we've got the speaker coming through the actual Pandora box itself rather than the monitor. And let's lower it down a little bit. Right, let's show you a few more games. So to exit. Again, two players. Now they're not all two player games, so if we were to go to, for example, Shinobi, then it's a one player game. It says you want to play two players, but all that will happen is you will both take it in turns on this one here. So player one will go here, then when they die, player two will go here, etc. So when I was growing up, these were all the main games that they had in the arcades. It's a bit of Wonder Boy. one can you see the screen tearing that's happening when I go fast you can see that the background is quite distracting so you can see that not every single game is perfect Right, okay, and just to show you an example of a game that really doesn't work well, let me go to Mortal Kombat. Right, and if you listen to the audio, and you can just see, it's just far too slow.
see the clapping and everything, it's just running. I don't know what speed it is running, it seems to be running about 60% off what it should be. Right. Now what does feel a little bit strange about this is when you go to turn it off, there's no option on screen to shut it down. All you've got to do is turn it round and hit the power supply off like so, which does feel a bit odd this day and age just to turn it off like that, but that's what you do and it appears to work just fine. Now I'm gonna show you the arcade sticks working on a Steam game on a PC. Okay, so now we've got everything unplugged from the back of this. You can see no power cable apart from the USB and the USB is going into the bottom port and then this cable here goes off to my PC and as you can see I've got steam up here and now if you have a look it doesn't matter what joystick I use you can see it's moving around the place so let me show you a bit of cuphead working and we'll do two player just to show you they're both working independently off each other right so you can see one of them moving around there and now let's join in the second player and there's the other one right so let's go up and it seems pretty responsive right so this one is the red one so player one is the red one And player two is the blue one. Okay. Okay, so you get the idea of it there. Right, I'm going to open it up now and show you the inside of it. Right, to undo it, we just need to undo the screw here, here and here, and then it will open up. I'm just using a little crosshead screwdriver. Okay. And it just hinges up there because it's got some hinges here. Right, okay now, we just rest it like this. Okay, so this is the inside of it here. You can see all the buttons here. This is the bottom of the joystick. You can see that it's just a round gate. But I'm going to have a look now and see how easy it would be to swap it over to a square gate. And then this is the inside here. So you can see that we've got one fan here. We've got the speaker over there. We've got the LED light strip going across here to make all the different colours. So if it really did annoy you, I mean, it would be possible to uh, remove that. And here we have the motherboard. Let me just go through it in case any of you are interested. This QC, I presume it's quality control, underneath here is where the little SD card is. You see there? So that's what all the games are stored on. I don't know whether it would be possible to put a different SD card in there or not. I'll have to have a little look in Google, see if anybody's tried to do that before. Let me see if I can swap this gate over. Right, and when it comes to the buttons as well, if you did want to swap them, you can see you can just pull out the leads here, like so, and then I'm just going to push in the tabs. Yeah, there we go. So it's not a big job to swap them over if you want it to. And then when you get the new one, you just pop it in. It's going to clip into place and you put these back on, like so. Let's have a little look at this gate here, see if it can be swapped over to a square one. Okay, it would have been much easier with a flathead screwdriver rather than trying to force it with this. Right, okay, so that was there. Let's try to put this one on. Yeah, actually it went on very easy. Right, let's have a look. 
So you can see now, if you prefer a square gate, how easy it is to change over. And now rather than going around in a circle, can you see I've got four flat sides. Personally, I prefer an octagonal one, so the one with eight sides. But different people will be used to different ones. So, But you can see how easy it is to swap over. And again, you can buy things like this from eBay for a couple of pounds. Right, okay, so last thing, I'm just gonna show you the measurements of it. Now, this is made out of metal, this bottom bit here, so it's quite nice. It's got like rubberized feet on it, so it's sliding around. The top is quite thick acrylic. You can't change the cover art on it. I've had a look here and it doesn't look like you can peel it off, so you're gonna be stuck with this, if you're getting this one, the Ryu themed Street Fighter one, but you can get other styles. Uh, I presume you can't peel this off. I had a little look at it and it does look like it's definitely like plastic welded or glued into place so I think it's got to stay there and the size of it is around about 64 centimeters so 640 millimeters by it's smaller here it's only about 21 centimeters this bit here is around about 22 centimeters the buttons themselves appear to be let's measure on this one here yeah, it looks to be about 32, and the small blue ones look to be around 20, about 26 or 27. So again, they're all going to be standard sizes, so they're going to be easy to swap out. So there we go, that's my review of the Pandora Key 5S, and I do actually like it a lot. Now, it's not as good as the Pandora Box, because the Pandora Box has got a better processor. I think it's a quad core, and it's got a fan on it as well, so it's directly cooling the processor, while with this one, it's got a fan here that just gets rid of the hot air that builds up in here. So with the proper Pandora Box, it would be able to play games like Mortal Kombat and OutRun really well, while this one struggles. But this still plays the majority of games well, and it's a lot less money. The Pandora box, the official one, would be about 50% more than this. Now, even the Pandora box, which this is a copy of, still isn't really a licensed product, is it? If you think about it, are companies like Sega getting money from Pandora Box and the companies that made these to play the games on it? I don't believe they are. I believe that these companies are just taking these ROMs straight off the internet, packaging them all up, and then selling them on for profit, which really is, if you think about it, piracy. I mean, a lot of the games on here, even if you were to try to find the original owner of that material, would you be able to find them? Probably not, but a lot of them you would be able to find, and I don't believe they're getting any money for it. So I suppose it is a form of piracy. But a lot of people are really into emulators. There's a massive emulator scene. So if it doesn't bother you, if you're quite happy to download ROMs for your emulator anyway, then this is just making it easier for you. So it just saves you having to set up your emulators, learn about them, and then get the ROMs and load it on. If you're into emulators, really this is of no use to you. But this is perfect for maybe perhaps the person that already owns an Xbox or a PlayStation 4, but they want something just to play some old arcade games that they remember when they were a child and this is perfect because you don't have to worry about setting anything up it's just a case of plugging in and it really works so I think the market for this is gonna be you know 30 to 40 year olds because let's face it realistically if you're 10 to you know 20 are these games really gonna mean much to you probably not yes of course you could definitely get into them but half of the fun is just a nostalgia off being a kid, seeing all these games, knowing that you only had, you know, a fistful of 10 and 20 Ps in your pocket and you knew you could only play like maybe four or five games. Well, with this now, you can play them all, all night long for free, which is good. So I do actually think that the £115 asking price or $155, whatever it is, is actually quite reasonable, especially when you've seen that it also works on Steam as two separate arcade sticks. So personally, I do like this, and I actually do recommend you to get something like this, or you can also get a Pandora 6, again, not an official one, let's call it a Pandora Key 6, and with that one, it actually allows you to get your own ROMs, plug it into the back, and you put your ROMs onto here, and then you put it into here, and then you can play the ROMs via here, which is a pretty neat feature. Also. The, the, the six one as well also allows you to save the game. So what I didn't mention is earlier on, you can only exit the game, you can't save it. So if you've spent 45 minutes playing Street Fighter or Double Dragon or something, then you can't go back to that stage. You've got to play it just like a real arcade. You've got to go there and you've got to start from the beginning each time. But again, because a lot of these games, they don't go on for that long. 
they are all completable because they are arcade games. For example, I think Altered Beast might have taken me and my son around, I don't know how long it took, 45 minutes, something like that. Uh, Golden Axe, again, about another 45 minutes to complete. We played over half an hour of 1943 and we didn't complete it, but I haven't actually looked up to see how long that does take to complete. So everything is completable within a certain amount of time frame. It's not a game that's going to go on for 200 hours. It's just not going to happen. So it does it really matter that you haven't got the game saves on here but of course it would be handy and it would be a good feature to have so if you like the look of these products please check out gearbest www.gearbest.com and then you can check out their prices see what they've got on offer and hopefully you might find something that you like so that's it for me please give it a thumbs up if you like the video and please subscribe for more how-to videos right to undo it now here is a list of all 999 games